Okay, so you might have seen the last couple of weeks I've been looking at the tune Whippersnapper by Wayne Krantz. Uh, check the old videos if you want to. Um, but I got a question from Clive and he was asking about a few of these examples of this outside playing. So I did some other videos about the strategies that Wayne is using to go outside and some of those included using kind of F melodic minor. <laughs> Dorian vamp for this. Another technique which we looked at last week included using the whole tone scale. That kind of thing and also I think he ended up using the um, A altered scale. End of that lick. Um, like that. So, in my own improvising though, what Clive noticed was there was this other technique going on. So, I'll just describe that for you. Quite simply, it involves kind of taking your pentatonic box, which you're using, and I think they call it side slipping. This is maybe one of the, the key ways for a guitarist to get into this idea of outside playing. So, I'll just show you the examples now. <laughs> into the examples a bit closer I think it's important to recognize when this is appropriate and when this is not so you know you see potentially people doing this in places where it doesn't really work particularly well you know you don't want to crack this out at a wedding and have the bride's mother scream from across the room you know this sort of stuff kind of works in a fusion context and it kind of works in a jazz context to some degree but generally you don't want to be cracking out these licks at a wedding I would suggest um, so that's the first lick, it kind of does this. So what we're doing there, we're using kind of the rhythmic repetition and we're setting up the idea of a motif by playing it twice. Three, four. Then we're just we're altering it for the third repeat. And what we're doing with that third repeat, we're just taking this idea. So we're on the G, down to the F, down to the D, to the C. So just the D minor pentatonic idea. And all we're doing is just shifting that up to for the first bit of the phrase and then falling back into some appropriate notes. So what we're really thinking about for this is I want to move away from home, outside the box. But what's really important is that we land back inside the box strongly. So, so this kind of thing can work, but I find it works really well if you come back strongly into the inside key, then it really does sound like that was intended. So practice sticking the landing on this sort of stuff. So, three, so what we're trying to do is give the notion that we've gone outside and we're getting these dissonant notes which wouldn't work in D minor ordinarily and then we're coming back inside and landing so that we're saying to our audience I intended to do that that was intentional Sticking the landing is really how you help to give that impression. And if you stay outside for too long, you get sunburn. Similarly, if you stay outside too long, I think you can lose the effectiveness of this outside playing. And I think it then sort of becomes, just sounds like you potentially don't really know what you're doing. I use this example, same similar kind of idea. Uh, it's a slightly longer line, but building off of that first example, I'm starting outside again and I come back inside uh, on the fourth semiquaver fourth semiquaver the fourth semiquaver so you 
get that jump down instead of, which is what I was doing, I'm starting this phrase. And then here's another bit which is kind of going outside. And I'm sliding up there, I think. We move up the D minor scale. And then we shift out into like an E flat Dorian. And then slide back in. So just slightly faster, I'll try and put that together. This was an improvised line, so it's a little bit tricky for me to... So what we've got there, as I say, we're starting off outside, semitone. And then jumping back outside again towards the end of the lick to get that kind of... And at the top of that lick there again, we've got some of that outside. quite literally doing like a side kind of shift as we're kind of sliding up for these bits so just one more time something like that um, then the the last lick similar kind of thing going on we're gonna start off outside but we've got like an E flat minor descending line so inside there and we, um, we get that chromatic movement down here to, to land back on that three of the D minor which kind of gives us that strong idea that we're kind of back in D minor and then the lick continues and kind of ends up doing a whole, you know. But this is the interesting outside part of the lick. So we're starting on an upbeat. So the, the idea here is that you can kind of imply what you like, but as long as you land on a, a strong chord tone um, like the, the third, you're going to probably be fine. So if you're aiming to land on the beat and on a chord tone is what I would suggest. Or just before the chord tone. But that's what I would aim for, so aim for landing kind of on a chord tone. And things that you might want to try to get this idea into your system is, so you might practice this kind of thing. Might 
try and change up the frequency of, of changes. So you might do four notes in D minor and then four notes in the E flat minor above it. That kind of thing. And that's kind of getting this idea of that side stepping into your playing. So figure out a few different ways to practice. So you know you've got all of these pentatonic box shapes. You can consider doing this kind of side stepping technique. I think that would really help if you're trying to get this kind of thing into your playing. Again, like I say, knowing when and when not to do this is probably the main key to it. Um, it's not the sort of thing that you want to be cracking out over Mr. Brightside, please. Hopefully that was useful to one or two people, hopefully Clive at least. Um, if you want to get the tab for this, I'll put that up on my Patreon, as well as the backing track is up there as well for you to check it out. Um, but that's kind of what I'm thinking of with those outside things and the strategies that I would use and how I would practice that. So there you go. Catch you in another video soon. Feel free to like and subscribe if this was helpful. Please feel free to leave comments as well if you've got other subjects that you want me to try and cover. I'm happy to do that. Catch you in a bit.